they serve their purpose and now the relationship is over it is okay for us to let go a lot of times what happens when you heal from a traumatic experience from a toxic relationship from that narcissist you think different your whole way that you choose to deal with things is a whole lot different than you did with before and sometimes what people will do is they will resurface in your life sometimes it's out of a genuine heart just to pull you back in to the same trauma but you have healed and you are different and i want you to know that your difference is impacting people that you used to deal with your difference you see some people were so accustomed to you going back to uh to the relationship going back to that same friendship group saying one thing and doing another but you have entered a space in your life where your words and your actions are matching because you are determined to get every Thing good out of your life. A lot of times what we would do in the past is we would talk about what we wanted and we would do something different. But now your words and your actions are matching. Now the window of heaven has been open for you to access every good thing that God has for you. And the problem with some people is they want you to settle and they don't want you to have that good thing. The problem with some people in our environment is they want us to stay in the same position as human as humans and humanity but we are elevated so we're living in a different whole frame a different whole spirituality than ever before and and, and people are losing control of you it was so easy to control you before, though. It was so easy to control you through just various aspects of control. But God got a hold of your heart. He got a hold of your soul. And now he is controlling your moves. He's controlling your thoughts. He's controlling your heart. And you have given him the space to do it. But everybody around you, though, they don't understand the changes that you have made in your life. They don't understand how serious you are about what you're going to do in this life. They cannot understand why it's this change about you and that you are okay with being by yourself. I want you to understand, baby, that you have really literally kicked the devil up off of his feet, okay, when you were able to stand alone. I want you to know that the devil never wanted you to ever be able to just stand alone in the presence of God and be okay with that. Many times throughout our lives, we visit this whole area, this whole space in our lives where we were alone. And some of us would be so terrified or so sad, so depressed, so angry because we stood alone. But it was during the times that we stood alone that we really began to embrace the purpose of the stillness, the purpose of the stillness to allow more God into our lives, to love us, to nurture us back to wholeness, to inspire us, to educate us, to teach us, to equip us for the new thing that God has presented before us. And you're just so different now. Instead of choosing toxic connections, you choose to observe connections to see if it's a connection that you really want to be a part of. Instead of allowing yourself to be company for misery, you removed yourself and you allowed the spirit of misery to go and find company somewhere else. The new improved version version of you, the awakened a version of you is changing the way that we live our lives today. No longer are you willing to accept what they, whoever it may be, has said about you, but you're willing to really pray and seek God and seek his, his answers for your life, his presence in your life. And that is making a difference. God has literally healed the trauma in your brain, healed the trauma in your heart. Your central nervous system has been rebooted and it's almost like a new person. And I know a lot of times when you get this healing and you're new and God has made you over through the blood of Jesus Christ, you're so excited about it. It's like you walk different. You talk different. You're wearing the robe of righteousness. You have, you know, the crown on your head. 
of just Christ consciousness. You're just in a great space and it bothers people for you to be in a great space because I want you to understand that people get completely just enthused with you being miserable. They, they, they do, but you're different now. Keep being that way. Keep loving on God. Keep allowing God the space to move in your life. Keep allowing him to pull back every layer that is bothering you that you present before the Lord. And I tell you, he will make it all new. Your change is changing this world. I don't know why inauthentic people felt that they will always have us to be little worker bees to keep them at the top while we stay at the bottom. That was never the will of God for your life. It was never the will of God for us to be at each other's throats. It was the will of God for us all to come together under his lead, under his direction, the direction of the most high to do things for us. Because I want you to know that something major is about to happen. God showed me in prayer. He said, Shonda, something major is about to go down. And I want you to understand that it is very important for you to pray for yourself, pray for your family, stay connected to God. It is very important for you to stay in the presence of the Almighty One. It's very important for you to consistently seek His face and cry out to Him so that He can hear us. It's very important for us to come outside of what is physical and tap into what is spiritual, which is the Spirit of the Most High. It's very important for us to be just like the Israelites and begin to cry out to God so that He can let the, the, the enemy can let us go because we are at a point, a pivotal moment where we are about to be free in so many areas. See, we thought that we knew what freedom was before. We thought we knew, but God says, no, the freedom that I have for you is something that you have never experienced before at all in this world but we have to stay connected to god we have to stay on one accord we have to move our differences aside and really focus on the task at hand the task at hand is for us to reconcile a lost world back to our father through the blood of jesus christ the task at hand is for us to unite as one and pray and cry out to god because i tell you the truth prayer changes things I don't care what anybody says. Prayer changes things. When you begin to speak the love language of prayer, it goes out into this whole universe and it will touch that window of heaven and God will begin to commune with us. We need God during these these times, this uncertain time, this dark time, this time where it seems like anything goes. We need the spirit of of the most high we need him to show up we need him to show out we need him to touch the mind of leaders in high places so that they can see that the spirit of the most high is the answer love is the answer peace is the answer we need god to step in so that no more innocent lives will be lost in just foolish ignorance and egotistical decisions and money we need god to step into our environment and free his children from the hand of the evil oppressive spirit that has reigned in this world for thousands of years. We need God. We need him to come and perform miracles like he did for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We need God to come in like he did for Moses and the children of Israel. We need God like he did for Joshua when they went into the promised land, when giants were all in the land. We need the Most High to fight for us. And the problem is, is we choose to try to fight on our own, something that we will never be able to defeat in our own might. But we have to come together in unison to defeat the enemy. God says that he's call, calling all of us together throughout the whole world to call on him. And when we call on God, he will show up for us. Because I want you to know, I talk to a lot of people when it comes to my job. I do. I talk to people in all 50 states over here. And the one thing that I hear in everybody's voice is the spirit of fear the uncertainties, 
in our environment, the climate in our environment, the darkness. Everybody's so concerned about their well-being, the lives of their children and their grandchildren, the lives of even their neighbor. Everybody is so full of fear. Do you know that's what the enemy wants us to be? It's full of fear. But God gives us a sound mind, not the spirit of fear. God gives us the weapon of prayer, the weapon of, the weapon of fasting and meditating on his word. He gives us the ability to commune with him through his son. He gives us that power and that authority. And it's time for us not to be fearful, not to be scared, not to rely more on what we're being told and what we're being seen, but rely more on the spirit of the most high. Come together, cry out to him. So as you go about your day today, I want you to know this, that your presence in this dimension is so necessary regardless to where you're sitting today whether you're sitting on the curve because you just don't have a home whether you're sitting in your home or in the school whether you're sitting in the top at the top of a fortune 500 company whether you're sitting somewhere in the wilderness because god told you to go there wherever you are today the one commonality that we all have is our love for the most high god our desire to pre please him, our desire to have him to come into our hearts and make us over, our desire to be one with one another, to share the love of the most high with one another, our desire to walk in the frame and the blueprint of Jesus, our desire to get God to show up, to just give him that invitation, to show up in our lives, to co-create with us, to partner with us, to deliver us through whatever we're going through today. I want you to think about that. I don't want you to look at your neighbor as your enemy, but look at your neighbor as your partner that you need to be in one unison, to be on one accord with you, to get prayers to heaven so that God can hear us and shake the hand of the Pharaohs in our lives so that he can present a leader like Moses, come on somebody, to let his people go. And until the next video, guys, peace, because I believe you're changing the world. Bye now.